Welcome back to DBL. For the past five years, a double murder has haunted a Georgia community. An elderly couple was killed, beheaded, and dumped into a lake. It's the only unsolved case in the county. We have an update in True Crime Chronicles. Russell and Shirley Dermond lived a happy and good life. They were married for 63 years and enjoying retirement at their secluded home in Lake Oconee, Georgia. That particular spot, that cove where they had was, was really private. That privacy has made it even more difficult to catch his parents' killers. Five years have passed since that unimaginable day. Pat, I'm getting 911. Yes, I have an emergency. Okay. I think I have somebody dead. May 6, 2014. A friend makes a frantic phone call to police after checking on the Drummonds at their home. They discovered a gut-wrenching sight. 88-year-old Russell Drummond beheaded in the garage. They don't even know how he was murdered because we don't have his head. 10 days later, a fisherman discovers 87-year-old Shirley Drummond's body weighted down with cinder blocks. She was in the lake about five miles from the family's home. It's the horror that they must have gone through. That's what's so, so difficult to, to overcome. The Drummonds had no outstanding debt or enemies. Nothing was stolen from their home. The killer's motive has stumped Putnam County Sheriff Howard Sills. I have utilized the resources of the FBI. We've had no shortage of people wanting to help. He's convinced two or more people conspired and carried out the killings. We may not like how long it may take, but that will be solved. And earlier, Tori, Lindsay, and Brandon spoke with a journalist who spent months investigating this cold case. Take a look. We are joined by investigative journalist Jessica Knoll with Volt Studios in Columbus, Ohio. Jessica, thank you so much for joining us. This is the only case the sheriff has not solved in his 44 years in law enforcement. Why do you think our investigators are having such a hard time? One of the major things is there was very little evidence left at the scene. You know, their house was left almost untouched. It was immaculate and there was no fingerprints, no foreign DNA. So there's a lot of roadblocks. Um, and one interesting point about the community they lived in was a gated community. And typically there are cameras. Right. And there had been a storm earlier that week that knocked out the power. And so there were no cameras. So they don't even have that kind of evidence mm. to look at to see who was coming in and out. So it could have been anyone at this point. All right, Jessica, you also spent a lot of time with the sheriff investigating and revisiting the crime scene. So in that moment being there, what still sticks with you about this case? He took me out on Lake Oconee uh, where Shirley's body was found and it's this beautiful, serene area and I think just that juxtaposition of the horrific things that happened to this couple um, in such a beautiful place in Putnam County um, really sticks out for me. One of the things found, it was intertwined in a wound um, on Russell's hand, was Shirley's hair. Oh, now wow. Shirley, as you know, was not found with him. Uh, he was found beheaded in the garage and she was then later found 10 days later in the lake. That was his last stitch effort a heroic mm. act of love wow. for his wife, trying to shield her from whatever was, oh you know, gosh. being used to kill her. And you also drove to Florida to speak with their son. So what does he think the motive was and who does he think is responsible? You know, he's kind of just as clueless as the sheriff is at this point. And I don't say that in a negative way. He just has no idea because his parents were just loved. They were grandparents and they didn't have any enemies. He's told me that he feels confident that if anyone's going to solve his parents' murders, it's going to be Sheriff Sills. Thank you so much, Jessica. Now to read more on this case, visit 11alive.com. This story is also the subject of Tegna's True Crime Chronicles podcast this week. You can listen to the episode on your favorite podcast player. We really appreciate people like Jessica Knoll keeping yeah. the story alive. And if you know anything, of course, please reach out. Thanks a lot, Jessica.